On the left you see a demonstration of some average ways of standing. What do all of these have in common? I think two things, the feet and the head. The feet are pointing outwards to the side and if you look very closely you will notice the weight of the body is on the toes. The head is displaced rather far forward in front of the shoulder. You know how much your head weighs? Before I tell you, just try to make an intelligent guess. 500 grams, 1 kilo, 3 kilos. Well, no, the weight of an adult's head is the equivalent of about 9 or 10 bottles of beer, 7 kilos. With an anterior head, the muscles of your shoulder have to work every waking minute of the day to stabilize that weight and to prevent the head from falling to the ground like Newton's famous apple. It may start to make sense why they hurt and complain after a long day. Now, how do I, in the demonstration on the right, accomplish the much better head placement without looking all that tense? Well, one of the secrets lies in the feet. Look again closely. The feet are kept straight forward. The weight of the body is carried much more towards the heel. The feet influence the position of the head? Indeed they do. For every little bit the feet are pointing outwards, the head will drop forward. Feet straight means head better balanced. In one day, this may not make a big difference, but over 10, 20, 30 years? But why on earth don't we use our feet intuitively correctly? One of the reasons lies in the amount of sitting in our daily lives. Can you see how in this so-called relaxed sitting position the legs rotate outwards? The only thing preventing the total collapse of the body is the glass wall of the bus shelter. Now watch. The mechanical trick of an upright sitting position is nearly entirely a movement of the pelvis over the hip joints. Thus, to bring your spine into a more upright position and keep your 7 kilo head in relative balance, just move your pelvis up until you feel the weight of your body in front of your sitting bones. Don't worry, you can't go too far, the legs are in the way. So, what does all of this have to do with our standing problem? Well, if you sit in this collapsed position over extended periods of time, the legs will get used to the outward rotation. When you then attempt to put your feet straight in standing, this feels very uncomfortable. Thus, you then stand with your feet everted, making sitting upright even less comfortable. A vicious circle from which you can only escape through consciousness or exercises. The human body was certainly not constructed for the amount of sitting we do nowadays. And sometimes we do actually move and walk. The basic rule we discovered in standing, feet out means head forward, also applies in walking. Observe how in this example the position of the feet pulls the head forward. By contrast, Ludek's feet are pointing straight forward, which does not only keep the head more balanced, but also keeps the knees from rotating, preventing injuries to the joint. On top of that, if nothing else, this type of straight feet walking appears much more gracious than the other, and overall Ludek will come across as much more in control and more likable. Help to find this grace in walking comes, for some people, from walking backwards a couple of steps and then maintaining the same attitude in the body while walking forwards. When you walk upstairs, the attitude becomes even more important. On the right, the body is being pushed upwards mainly by the leg muscles. Compare that to the ease in the example on the left. The visualization of carrying a jar on the head or being pulled up by a string will activate the upper body muscles and spread the effort over the entire body. The same ease and grace in walking stairs downwards can be achieved by paying attention to the toes. The big toe hits the ground first and then the foot rolls onto the heel. Using the foot the other way around leads to the clumsy walk shown here. Again, the support for the head is entirely left to the shoulder muscles. Unfortunately for many of us, the workday does not include a lot of movement. We sit, often in front of computers, usually in hunched over positions, with the head so far forward as if we wanted to dive into the screen. If you think that Tomasz is exaggerating, glimpse at the two real people in the background once in a while during the next few minutes. Both hands are usually positioned with the fingers pointing outwards and most of the clicking with the mouse is done using the index finger. You may think this is a detail, we shall see. A good starting point would be to use our sitting principle already discussed at the bus stop. 
So, Tomasz, bring up your pelvis so that the weight of your upper body is in front of your sitting bones. Pretty good. With some practice, Tomasz would be able to roll his pelvis up even more over time, but even this partial attempt dramatically improves the situation for the whole upper body and the head. Now the new hand position. The elbow is pointing out as far as possible and the fingers are pointing inwards. Mouse clicking now has to be accomplished by the middle or the ring finger. Now watch how the combination of the two elements, pelvis in a better position, and an improved use of fingers and hands changes the way you sit. First, our chaotic use of the body. Let's improve this and use the legs to bring the pelvis up so that the spine is more upright. The seemingly unimportant change in the use of hands and fingers and the reaction of the whole body to the different positions. In the ideal world, of course, you would have a standing desk, since the human body is really not constructed to sit over extended periods of time. The way we use our fingers and hands can not only change our shoulder girdles, but also our entire body. Let's explore this in the simple task of lifting something heavy. In this first example, Ludek uses a grip initiated by the thumb and the index finger. Observe how the weight of the crate rotates his shoulders forward and rounds his back. Not so good. Let's try using a different strategy. The main change in Ludek's approach to picking up the crate will be the use of a different grip. A strong grip initiated by the middle finger, the ring finger and the pinky, with the thumb and the index finger balancing the weight but not carrying it. Much more upright, shoulders not rotated forward. Excellent job, Ludek. It's that simple? Yes. When we pick up or hold something heavy and want to use optimal body mechanics, we need to use the strong grip of the three outer fingers. The thumb and the index finger balance weight and should be used for the subtle things in life, like the pen, a pair of tweezers, a coin, but certainly not to carry weight. In another real life example, we will now send Zdena on a shopping tour to the local supermarket. Wow, she must have some really heavy items in those two bags. Aha, the wrong grip. So, in spite of obeying rule one, which was to keep your feet straight, she seems to collapse under the weight of her shopping bags. Now watch how the use of the strong outer finger grip not only transforms Dana's body mechanics, but also her whole demeanor. If Marta were to use this carrying technique all the time, she would probably end up with a lot of pain in her back and shoulders. But what a difference when she starts using the strong outer three finger grip in both hands. She won't be in pain and the little one will feel a lot safer. Even if we follow these instructions, sometimes the muscles of our shoulder girdle get tense. We often try to relax them, but to no avail. For some reason, our brains do not seem to understand the instruction, relax the shoulders. But Ludek has figured out a trick. His instruction is, feel your elbows heavy. Feel your elbows heavy works in any situation. You do have a choice. You can do any task with your elbows high or with the elbows heavy and down. You can cut your vegetables with your elbow up and your shoulder as close as possible to your ears. Or you can build yourself a new neck by keeping your elbows heavy and wide. You can drive a car with high elbows and tight shoulders or with a heavy and wide elbow and relaxed shoulders. Finally, at the end of the day, a nice glass of beer. Lujek and Laya are experimenting with what we have explored so far the two different ways of holding things. First, the weak 
thumb and index finger grip. Watch how far forward Lagia's shoulder and head roll as a result of this grip and remember the head weighs about seven or eight times as much as this glass of beer. I would suggest that Lujek and Lagia will over the years be in a lot less pain and will be able to enjoy their beer much more if they got used to always using the strong outer finger grip. Lagia's shoulder and head can stay in place and the muscles of the back relaxed. But I've gotten so used to holding things with my thumb and index finger, can't I ever use them again? Of course you can. The next time you have an espresso, the thumb and index finger grip has its place. The end of a long day, and you would like to have a good night's sleep. Zdena has learned how to do that by relaxing the deepest muscles of her body. It's actually a lot easier than you think. Observe for a moment closely what she's doing. She puts her knees up and organizes her head so that she's lying on her skull and not on her neck. Next she focuses her attention on her breath. On the inhalation she puts her throat into the position as if she was saying the letter G. On the exhalation she allows her abdomen and organs to hang down by thinking the sound Yeah. Inhale on G, exhale on Y. Slowly she feels her neck and head relaxing and her lower back sinking more and more into the mattress. Inhale on G, exhale on Y. Inhale on G, exhale on Y. Inhale on G. Exhale on Y. Then she stretches her legs out and falls asleep.